Welcome to the underground, my little underground with Peter A. It's my little underground. I'm Peter A. Returning to the show, we have rapper and producer Buster Wolf. He's talking up his new beat tape, Jewel Cake, along with the recently announced collaboration with Citronella Room label head Artisan P. Their collaboration is called Don't Tell a Soul. That'll be out October the 13th. And Buster Wolf also talks about what video games he's playing, what games he's looking forward to, along with other projects he's got coming out with Citronella Room. And we also reprise our conversation on song duration and so much more. It's so good to catch up with the great Buster Wolf right here on My Little Underground. My Little Underground. Welcome back to My Little Underground. Glad to have you. How you doing? Very well. Can't complain. I'm excited about life and everything going on right now. Damn straight. You know, you got engaged. Congrats. I did. Yeah, that was a big thing that that was another one of the big things. It was like nothing was going on and then everything happened all at once. But yeah, that's a big, exciting thing that's happening. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And what what's interesting about like your wedding as far as like putting it together, because you're a photographer and you're a DJ mm-hmm. and musician. So like. <laughs> When you're putting together, like you're trying to look for a wedding photographer or stuff like that, I'm sure wow. your expectations are like exponential. Am I right? That's funny. Um, you know what? I might, I might have, um, yeah, I might have like, but the thing is, I having been a wedding photographer, having been wedding DJ before, like, for ours it's just gonna be so low-key like we are doing a spotify playlist we don't have a dj um i'm just like whoever wants to take pictures take pictures we have a couple photographers in the family that's probably gonna take some real nice photos and everything but uh yeah i'm trying to i think having been to like a lot of just big uh just out-of-pocket weddings and 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 being around all that stress and everything i was like nah i think we're very low-key people so yeah my expectations for this specifically are not super high um i think i just want to get through it path of least resistance uh yeah it's just like uh courthouse marriage and then a little after party with uh close friends and family so um yeah i never thought i would even get married so like yeah that's cool beautiful thing man i don't think i could do i don't think i do a big wedding that's i'm not not that type of person so yeah. So musically, you're pretty busy as well. Um, yeah. Jewel Cake, your latest yeah. album, your latest solo effort. When I was listening to this and after listening to it many times, um, yeah. I've noticed that maybe you can probably correct me if I'm wrong. Like the production style to me is more genre ambiguous, where as like Loops yeah. 3 was more like hip hop focus. Is that fair to say? Um. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you listen to all the loops, all the, all all the loops albums, uh, they definitely started out that way, and even towards loops three, which was like short, more experimental, I think with um, uh, sample choices and things like that. Uh, Want to keep things simple and light, you know, so that it's, you got you got to fit it on the seven inch. Um, but it, I think it started out that way in general. And then up to now, that's why I didn't call this like loops for or loops, anything. It's, it was just like, it was its own thing. And to be honest, there was like a couple of old tracks on there from when I was doing a different project where I didn't want it to be Buster Wolf in it. Cause I was like, nah, I want to be like, I do want to be more genre ambiguous. Um, so I want to say like two of those tracks from that time when I was experimenting under a different artist name made their way onto Jewel Cake. So actually very amazing that you caught that. <laughs> very cool. Yeah. And something else I've noticed, uh, like thinking about our old, our previous conversation, because you almost kept a similar theme in loops. Like the, the, the song durations are very tight. They're very short, um, which is cool. And you also said last time that you were trying to fit it into like, like a social media post. Did you go into Jewel Kick with the the same mentality? Um, I think that just uh, that I think that's just how I approach everything now. Um, I think I liked 
that process and, and the simplicity of it and the way I work, I'd really like to just finish something up and move on to something else. So brevity works in my favor just because I'm constantly, it's like an assembly line. I constantly have a new thing I want to try out what the old thing is still there is like the new idea is already on its way. So to keep things short for me is um, it started to just become like the natural way that I do things now. Um, I have, my attention span has been shrinking. I used, I didn't, I never, never think I, I had a short attention span. It turns out I have a tremendously short attention span and um, I like moving on to the next thing. So yeah, keeping things short, I think works for me in that way. And I think also for the listener, um, I think a lot of listeners, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think it's a bad thing because I'm one of those people too, but I think a lot of listeners too, um, also have maybe shrinking attention spans just due to the way that we, you know, absorb information these days. So, um, yeah, I just try to keep that in mind, but also I'm a fan of like small media anyway. I like short films. I like short stories. I like anything that could like do what it needs to do in a shorter amount of time. I like that. I even like it in video games. Like we talked about video games last time. I, I, as I'm getting older, I like shorter games now. You know what I'm saying? Like you could give me a dope experience like Journey. It was like a two hour game. And it's like one of the most unforgettable game experiences I've ever had. So it was like anything that's short, if it could give me a dope, a dope ride and in half the time I'm there because like I'm getting older, my attention span is shrinking. So it all that that's where all of that comes from. But yeah, I've kind of just took that as my approach now i think moving forward most of my songs are going to be like sub 130 <laughs> that's like kind of my sweet spot because i love short See? music and you know yeah. what i don't even think it's the attention span thing what i've noticed maybe you've noticed this too certain songs overstay their welcome certain songs yes. are way too long you can listen yeah. to this probably like six minute songs that are ruined by its duration would probably oh, yeah. make a better four minute or three minute song I think that's yeah. more so than yeah, that's fair to say because we get so much things thrown at us about the intentions man thing. At the yeah. same time, it's hard to like kind of focus on one thing. But honestly, certain things are too long. Like certain movies are too long. Certain TV yeah. shows go on too long. Certain, certain video dungeons. games are way too long. Yeah, certain dungeons and RPGs. They play Sea of Stars now, and like some dungeons overstay their welcome. You're like, come on, how many times can you do a raise and lower the water level? Come on, like it's <laughs> been done. But yeah, it's uh. And and there's nothing against the long form. I love the long form. I'm I'm a big fan of of many a twenty and thirty minute song. So you know, one of my favorite like rap songs is uh, Beatbox, which is like ten minutes long. So um, or Beatbop, Ramelzi and um, K Rob. So yeah, but yeah, nothing against. I love long form music. I love I love me a nice long you know, uh, droney track like whatever. But for me, creatively. I don't, I don't have the wherewithal to, to make even like five and six minute songs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's really funny, like preparing for our chat again. Uh, yesterday I was listening to Sleep's Dope Smoker, which is an hour long song. Like, mm. like, the, the complete wow. opposite of Buster Wolf. Yeah. Yeah. I'm into it. I, um, I used to be a big fan of, um, this group called the Decemberists back in the day. Yeah. And um, they had this EP called The Tain. And it was like, I want to like a tw- like an 18 or 20 minute song in five parts. And I was like, man, that song's dope. Too bad I'm never going to see it live. And I went to see them one night. They opened with that shit. And I was just like, no. I was like, you never think you're going to hear the 18 minute song live. And I did. And I was like, all right, cool. But yeah, there's a time and a place for it, though. You know, like not you can't you can't have the full album be, you know, 10, 15 minute songs. It's like, I mean, I. I like I like Mars Volta, but there's some albums of theirs I can't oh, go on. to. I'm just like, man, I don't have time for this one. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of get exhausted listening to that, and like, uh, yeah. Mar- uh, what, what's the what's the other one? Um, not not Mars Volta, but um, at the drive-in. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's like, oh my god, like I'm just tired. I'm exhausted from listening to, to this, even though yeah. it's not like bad music or anything like that. But you yeah. know, what's, what's interesting about like long form media when you put your music together when you listen to your whole projects they're almost yeah. they're, they're like like almost like a prog rock song in a sense that or an extended mix like they they're Definitely. they're short songs but they can make for an extended project like case in point your 623 22 mix do you oh, do, yeah. do you see any more mixes in your future any more extended projects oh like yeah that? 
Uh, wow. Um, yeah, I think so. There's um, tons of beats I haven't used yet. I would love to do another um, beat set like that um, and put that out because that was just super fun. Um, some of those beats were made like there on the spot too, which was really cool. Um, yeah, I'm I'm doing I'm 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 doing a, a a weird I'm flying to Maine and doing like this like weird uh, performance at this like uh, art exhibit and um, DJ, doing a beat set for the first half of it. So I've been practicing that, and so I mean, yeah, it's definitely something I I do. It's not on the forefront right now, but uh, I do enjoy doing it. I, I love the fact that I have like enough of a catalog of like used and unused just sounds at my disposal like i could just i could do that for hours like i could just sit there and do that for hours and like just zone out i love doing that so yeah is it in the future yes yeah definitely <laughs> i don't know when though it's like a citronella room thing like you and uh you and dj proof with these instrumentals and these these mixes and uh i really appreciate that um yeah so in regards to video games what we were talking about um what have you been playing recently and what are you looking forward to? Yeah, right now it's I was I was doing a thing where I was like playing too many games at once and not getting very far in any of them. So I'm focusing on Sea of Stars right now. It's a indie like 16-bit RPG throwback type game. The music is so good. Um I'm not the biggest fan of the battle system, but like it's keeping me, yeah, it's definitely keeping me like I, I tell myself I have to finish that before I get anything new. Like I was super disappointed by Diablo Four, so I dropped that, uninstalled it. I think Final Fantasy Sixteen was dope. Uh, I'm doing a new game plus of that right now. Uh, uh, I for some reason I like plugged I, I I logged into a game of Splatoon Three yesterday and like <laughs> just got embarrassed and like uninstalled that one I've, I've been doing this thing where like when i get mad at a game i just uninstall it i'm like wow. nah. i'm like i only get mad at a game once if i get mad at it twice like you know what i mean yeah nah so i just uninstall it i tried to get back in the um warframe and nah like that didn't stick either i don't know what it is like these are games i probably would have really enjoyed in college and shit but like anything that takes way too much time to like advance even the slightest bit like those kinds of games are starting to fall off my radar like starfield i'm not into that like that's just out of 60 hours is a lot that just to get past the main game and still have hundreds of hours of like side quests like nah <laughs> i'll just like watch other people play it online i see you tweet about a lot of rpgs i'm like you're about to like plan a wedding how do you have time for all of this like this takes a lot, yeah. a lot of are you playing zelda at all what uh uh tears, tears of the kingdom yeah you know i didn't like it uh it felt like dlc it didn't feel like a complete game and you want to talk about like mechanics overstaying their welcome. I just think way too much of the game was like, if you weren't into the whole building thing, yeah, too bad, so sad. This is for our, our people that grew up playing with like Legos and shit and, and, and all the... Banjo-Kazooie, you know, nuts and bolts kind of... All bad. of those people, yeah. So, and like, it was just too much of that for me. I, yeah, and I just, you know, was revisiting areas from the first game and I'm like, yo, I paid, this was the first $70 Switch game, right? paid $70 for this. And I'm like, this feels too much like the same. I never finished it. I think I, I did enjoy the boss fights. I did two, I only did like two boss fights, but both of them were dope. But yeah, I'll get back to that one. I definitely have a folder named Backlog on my Switch and on my wow. PS5 and they're getting pretty thick, but I will go back and eventually. You know what I started playing on, on uh, PlayStation? Um, Celeste, you ever played that? um that's on the back i don't own that one but yeah that one's been on the back burner for a minute like i love the music of that game it's dope um i actually have i'm one of those weirdos that like whenever i hear about like a good like i'll hear about a game soundtrack before i hear about the game you know what i'm saying like i just love video game soundtracks so much but yeah i heard the soundtrack before i um even like saw footage of the game itself and I haven't actually played it. It looks hard, and it might be one of those where I'm like, "Now nah, I'll just watch other people play it type games. It's it's very challenging, but it's kind of like rewarding. It's not wow. like 
you, you played Elden Ring. It's not like mm-hmm. a Dark Souls type of <laughs> difficult, but it's like it will make you think, okay, maybe I shouldn't do that. It's all platform, right. which is kind of yeah. interesting. No enemies or anything. Um, uh-huh. You're talking a lot about like video game soundtracks and music and gaming. Have you ever put a game on mute and try to score it yourself? Because St. Vincent did that with Disney movies. I'm wondering oh, man. if you've done the same for with games. Oh, man. Um, hmm. You know, I've never done it that way where I would like um, mute a scene and like play something of mine. That sounds like fun, though. I feel like I, I would like to do that probably with anime and video games. Because I always wanted like to play something in the background of my live shows, like have like a projector. Yes. So in a way, looking for visuals for that would almost be like reverse engineering what you just said, which is like... Uh, trying to find sound to the visuals but um i've wondered if i would have the capacity to like score even a short film or even just like contribute a guest trap to like a, a, a video game soundtrack or something just because like i don't know i guess i would really have to like dig into my bag of tricks like i'm pretty lazy so like I think a lot of the emotion, if there's any emotion or anything like that in my music, it's it's like, it just arises on its own or is a happy accident. So if I had to like intentionally create emotional music to match a scene, oof, I think that'd be a tall order. I could probably do it, but it would probably like, I don't think it'd be very good at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you'd be good at it if you, if you try, try. for any kind of game. So uh, one more thing on video games before I dive more into your music. Is sure. there any games that you that aren't out yet? That's not out yet that you're looking forward to playing. That's not out yet. Yes. Um, right now, Final Fantasy. Um, I think the Rebirth is the name of no. Re. It's like the remake part two. What are they calling it? Re something. It's like. I think it's Rebirth. Anyway, the new Final Fantasy, the next one in the remake series that they're doing. Definitely looking forward to that. Um, Platinum, the last one. Damn, I'm trying to think of what else. There's probably like some other random RPG. I mean, I'm still waiting for a Chrono Trigger remake. I knew you were oh, going to say Chrono Trigger. I had a feeling you were a fan of that. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm, like, I'll, I'll, like, I really hope they do that and figure it out with the legalities of it. Like before I pass, I would love to play like a HD 2D remake of Chrono Trigger with like enhanced music and everything. Yeah. But uh, actually speaking of, yeah, there's, they're doing Star Ocean. The second story R, I think it's called. And um, that just looks really rad. Like kind of the same like HD 2D styles. It's like a remake of a PS1 RPG. But yeah, that's really it. I. I don't have any like big AAA games on the radar right now. I've been kind of disappointed with those. What about uh you heard about Mario Wonder? Yeah, that looks weird. <laughs> I know, which is why I'm excited to play it. I feel like I owe it to myself as a pothead to play this game. Like it just it looks, looks like, like it's gonna have a lot of pothead moments. Um <laughs> yeah. and I'll I'll probably get it eventually, but I'll probably wait for a sale. I, I don't know how I feel about the new graphical style, and worse yet, I don't know how I feel about Charles Martinet not being the voice of Mario anymore. Like, that kind of bums me out. It's like, gonna be weird. This dude has been Mario my whole life. Like, it's gonna be weird hearing somebody else. Like, yeah, exactly. And I'm more of a fan of the 2D Marios and the 3D Marios. I don't know if that's mm. hot, a hot take, but because I always love Super Mario World and even the new the Mario Bros. Uh, uh, what's it called? Deluxe to yeah. you deluxe like that 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 one was amazing um yeah so th- yeah mario wonder is probably the one game that's like okay uh i really <laughs> want to play this okay that's so interesting you're yeah. you're the first person you're the first person to tell me that they were like really excited for that game. i am i am it looks so like <laughs> funny and weird and, and it's 2d mario i have a, a photo for that. elephant elephant mario some, yes some yes but you gotta on, love man. them Come you on. gotta love them you know they're not afraid to, to, to try new shit you know what I'm exactly. Saying? exactly bless nintendo yeah always um, pushing the envelope yes uh, yeah exactly so i really loved your rap performance on artisan p's adult swim 
Um, and it seems like when you're playing live, you're, you're, you're rapping a lot more. Do you feel like you should be doing more rapping? Because you, you're putting a lot of beat tapes out as well. So do you think that, oh, I should be spitting more? Uh, I go back and forth. Yeah. Um, it, like, I have said too many times. I can't even say it anymore because nobody believes me. I've said many times that I was just going to, like, not rap anymore. But then, mm-hmm. like, I'll either... Most of the time, like, I'll make a series of beats and I'm like, man, like, I want to hear somebody rap over these, but, like, in a specific way. And then I'm like, fuck it, I'll just do it. <laughs> and I'm like, I'll I'll rap over them, record it as demos and be like, ah, you know what, I'll just put this out. Like, I did that with um, Your Kids Deserve Better. I actually have, I actually have an EP. <sighs> There's plans for me rapping on something early next year. So, um, yeah, I will be, I'll probably be rapping on, on some stuff from time to time, but I think it just has to be like a kind of a convergence of like me. Am I writing a lot around that time? Uh, am I being productive, making like beats that are rappable and not just like, you know, like noise or whatever, which I will also do sometimes. And, um, yeah, it has to be kind of like this perfect storm. But um, I always have one of one or the other. Um, and when I have excess of both, I'll usually just like record something like in a semi improvisational manner. And then like I'll listen to the demos a couple times. And if I don't get tired of them, I'm like, all right, I could put this out as an EP or album or whatever. So I know you're you're going to be rapping more this October because don't tell a soul. We just announced your first collab album that at least that we know about uh, with yeah. artists and P that's coming out uh, in October. Um, yes. So was this project in the works since you, you started with Citronella room or was it just more of a, a recent idea that you guys came up with? Um, well, we, we, we jokingly said recently that it only took eight years. Cause like, I think that's about how long we've known each other, but like the whole, we did like adult swim is so funny because like he has that on his most recent album but like um that was the first song we did and that was like eight years ago and it was like a different beat but anyway we've been planning on doing and we had done a, a song here a song there over the years but like i don't know why for some reason just we never like did a whole project together and um so i think it was even before i think it predates citronella room for sure Wow. Um, but we knew that once we Citronella Room was a thing, we knew that like, oh, well, it's time to release this EP. And what's funny is I want to say we planned on releasing it like last year. And <laughs> instead, it's like end of 2023. I think I think it was meant to be a 2022 release, but I'm, I could be mistaken. But yeah, I don't know. I think we just wanted it to be natural and not rushed and not like like i don't know it it was it ended up just being this fun project that we worked on over a longer period of time and um you know i i i think uh i think we like succeeded in like kind of getting the vibe we wanted which was like just on some mc shit like i think i think it's like a, a a good album going into the fall like a fall feel to it and um different uh different production on there i did two of the beats dj proof did one late show hosted one so everybody everybody who's released something on the label so far contributed to it as well oh that's amazing yeah. i'm very excited for that that's crazy because i really yeah. love on tilt on tilt is awesome like you you and rcp rhyming and then bus wolf doing scratches and production it's well, just- that was uh proof dj proof proof yeah what did i say yeah. did i say you yeah which i did yeah no because I, I just said i did some production of it proof yeah. did on tilt yeah he did the scratches on it which was great it's funny it was i was like it was times where, like phil was ready to like send the album up he's like it's done it's done it's done i'm like no like proof needs to scratch on this like are you serious it's not done until the man scratches on it so like it was like when i heard that i was like i, I had such a big grin because it adds so much to the song like to hear that you're like yes like this is a hip-hop song you know what i mean like so 
And I loved that. Yeah. Like, you know, the three of us have been doing stuff together for a long time. So to have us all together on this and it be the first um, single off the project, just it's nice. Yeah. Um, definitely excited to hear the full thing. And Buster Wolf, I thank you so much for coming back on my little underground. So please plug away all your socials and tell people where to get jewel cake. Yeah. Jewel cake is streaming, um, on most streaming services and, um, you could always, uh, pick up a copy on, uh, citronella room.com. We got some tapes left, uh, limited edition yellow tapes for that yellow cake. And, um, yeah, we got don't tell a soul coming out next month. I want to say it's Friday the 13th. So, um, also got some limited edition cassettes on that and, uh, hopefully get a music video out uh, for the next single out for that soon. And then I got a little, another little rap project. It's kind of like a spiritual successor to uh, your kids deserve better. That'll be out sometime early next year. And yeah, Citronella Room still has uh, quite a few releases. I think we're good for like next year, really. So <laughs> amazing. we're just going to keep, keep putting stuff out as, as a, I, I, we're trying to space it out now. Cause like, if it was up to me, I would just be like, all right, here's like a 58 track beat tape. Let's put this out tomorrow. Uh, no, nah, we're going to break that up into like three, four albums. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get you. I get you. That's a, that's yeah. a good route to go. I think so. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, anytime I get to just chat about music and video games is a good time. So anytime, man. That's why I bring you on here to kind of let that, you know, get that out of your system. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's great. No, really. Cause, uh, I, you're the last person I spoke to since this conversation. No, I'm just kidding. It hasn't been yeah. that bad, but I, I don't get out of the house anyway. But uh, um, no, I appreciate it, man. And um, appreciate you uh, big enough to label and show in love. And, uh, you know, it goes a long way. So thank you. My little underground.